to get it to to get right on it, I can just move the playhead exactly where I want it. And this time, since we're not changing the time signature, we just want it to create uh, the start of a measure right there. As I just hit Q, which is another built-in custom action, uh, and that's part of the um, Rock Band plugins. So you notice how as soon as I hit Q, it scooted everything a tiny bit. So now the measure is beginning right on that peak. So now that I've got the first two measures tempo mapped, I essentially need to slide the entire song forward so that it starts here at the beginning of the third measure. And then I'll use these first two measures for my count in. Um, so to make it easier to do that, I want to be able to select all of the tracks, all the audio tracks at one time. So I'm just going to move that acoustic guitar track back down here with its buddies, where it started from. And then I'll be able to click the top one, shift click the bottom one to get everything in between. And then just drag it forward. As long as I have snapping turned on, that little magnet icon, then uh, as I move it out here to the, the start of the third measure, it pops right to it, so it'll be exact. And then if I grab that leading edge, I can pull it out and reveal that little bit of um, her first guitar strum that we had shaved off, uh, just so we could um, be have some precision when we're lining up that first beat. And then uh, what, I'll, what I'll do is use these two tracks here um, to drop in a, an audio sample to serve as a count in. And that basically warns the player how quickly they're going to have to um, get ready to play. And we either use like a, a hi-hat cymbal typically or some drumsticks. It just kind of depends on the nature of the song. You can even grab samples out of the song itself. Sometimes it's just challenging to find a piece that's um, clean enough or doesn't have bleed through from one of the other stems. So what I'll do is um, put put the playhead right here at the beginning, select that count in track, and then say insert media file. And then earlier I dropped in this audio sample uh, to use. So I'll go ahead and grab that, and it drops it right in. So it's just one hi-hat hit. So then what I'll do is I'll just, um, with the, the audio sample selected, I'll just hit Control c on my keyboard, or you can right-click and select Copy. Uh, and then I can just paste it in as many times as I need to. Um, the reason we have two tracks here is in case there uh, is overlap in the audio, if it's a faster count in or a sample that has a long echo on it. Um, it sometimes sounds clipped or like it's getting chopped off if, uh, if you don't have that to overlap. We won't really have that problem here, so I'll just go ahead and put them all in uh, the first track. So we'll just go one, two, three, one, two, three. And then her guitar strum essentially serves as the and, like three and, leading into the song. And then we're ready to um, finish the tempo map. So what I'll do is I'll grab that acoustic guitar track, and then I'm also going to use the kit mix, which has a, a nice hi-hat timekeeping pattern in it, and the kick drum. And between the three of those, um, I'll have a good visual reference for doing the rest of the tempo map. So I'm just dragging them up to the top here. Sometimes it's a little cumbersome when it's a really tall uh, stack of tracks. So at the beginning of the song here, all we're hearing is the acoustic, but as soon as the drums kick in, um, those wave files are, are sort of easier visually to look at and see where we want the nodes in the tempo map. So I'm just going to zoom back in vertically so we can start to see the detail in the wave again. And then I'm going to solo that track so that all I'm hearing is the acoustic. Two, three, one, two, three. And if you just count it out, you'll start to hear where, uh, where the nodes go. One, two, three, one, two, three. So I want to put it right on this guy here. And uh, I'll turn off snapping so I can get right onto the, that little peak that I want. And hit Q. And you'll notice the grid line for the start of the fourth measure will snap right to it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. So there's the one, the downbeat for the next measure.
And then I think it's somewhere around the ninth or 10th measure when the drums kick in. So let me unsolo it so we can hear what's going on. Ah, uh, there it is, okay. Ordinarily, you've got a nice uh, kick-snare pattern if you're working with a song that's got more of a traditional rock arrangement. And the kick drum is always the easiest by far because, I mean, look how, look how huge the wave is and they're so separated from each other. It makes it really easy to go off of. In this song in particular, um, she's got uh, her drummer playing the kick on the downbeat at the beginning of the measure. And then it's like the three and beat, um, kind of like how her strum came in at the beginning of the song. So that makes it not necessarily the easiest um, reference point to go off of. So that's why I'm going to kind of use a combination of these kick uh, hits. And then if you look in the, the rest of the drum kit um, audio stem, has a nice hi-hat. If I solo it, you can hear it's giving us that nice one, two, three pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three. And you can see how much separation there is in the waves. It makes it really easy to look at and uh, go off of visually as a reference. So now I'm looking for the beginning of the 11th bar. And I'm going to start to use a combination of the kick and the hi-hat. So that kick drum is going to really be our first beat of the new measure. One, two, three, one. You can hear it goes and one so that um, there's a snare drum coming through here. And that's that'll be the start of the next measure. So this is pretty much how the whole song is going to go in this particular case. We've got a kick and then kick snare. And so that snare kicks off the next measure. And then they just alternate back and forth like that. So I won't make you uh, watch me do the entire song like that because um, it's just repeating the same actions. In some songs, you have to kind of pull out different tricks and use different reference points to uh, figure out where to put these nodes. Um, and then in some cases, you'll even have songs that will change time signatures on you and you'll have to use the uh, technique that I showed at the very beginning. So I'll go ahead and edit out and catch up with you after the tempo map is finished. Okay, so the tempo map is done, and now if I start to scroll back through, we should notice that instead of just chaos, it should start to look like, um, especially the kick drum transients are lined up with, uh, with the grid lines. And uh, it's looking pretty good. So now what I'm ready to do is zoom all the way out, and um, I want to start putting these tracks uh, where they belong in the template. And then we're essentially going to save this out and use this as a mixing template. And we're going to create an identical copy of it uh, that will be used as the charting template. But um, we needed the tempo map in place before we could really do, um, uh, do any of those other steps. So I'll go ahead and grab the uh, kick drum first and I'll put that onto the kick stem. And then I'll grab the uh, kit mix and put that where uh, the rest of the drum kit goes here. And then um, the acoustic guitar is essentially going to be the first of many guitar tracks because she has uh, so many different layers in this song. And um, you'll notice we've got these uh, effects tracks and that basically allows us, in a situation especially like the guitar where we've got a bunch of different stems um, that we're basically going to be editing between, uh, to create the playable part that you'll actually be playing along with in the game and then we'll need to relegate all of the non-playable parts at any given moment in the song uh, down here to the um, guitar tracks area and we'll need a we'll need a track for each layer and um, I think she had a total of five guitar layers if I remember right so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit control T um, to create some additional layers here and then I'll be able to drag in um, the other guitar layers coming up from the bottom here so here's the um, second acoustic layer. And uh, I can just double click that track and give it a name. And 
And then I think there were three electric guitar layers here, yeah. You just want to be careful as you're dragging them that you're not time shifting them uh, so they're not aligned with your other pieces anymore. Uh, oh, it looks like I needed one more track there. There we go. So the purpose of these effects tracks is it allows us to route multiple stems through one effects track and then do any um, compression or limiting we want to do um, on the group as a whole without having to manage these little um, effects envelopes for each individual track, which sometimes we have to do, but um, sometimes it's easier if we can just do it in a group. So I'm just going to uh, quickly give these tracks some names so I remember what they are. And then um, we have to actually route them through the effects track if we want the, um, the effects that we put on this track to, to have any effect on these guys. So the first one already was um, set up that way as part of the template. Um, to, to route these other tracks through the effects track, I basically bring up what's called a routing matrix, and it looks a little freaky the first time you see it, but it's actually not as complicated as it looks. You just hold down the Alt key and hit R to bring up this matrix, and um, all it is is it's just all of the tracks that you have down the left side, and then all those same tracks again across the top. And basically what it lets you do is bounce any track through any other track and so I just need to scroll down to where uh, my guitar tracks were here they are here and so notice that initial one that I had um, is this little uh, guy over here is basically telling us with that tooltip that pops up that the guitar play stem is routed through the guitar play effects track and what I want to do is just um, move the boxes for the rest of the guitar tracks over into that same column and then uh, they will all get the effects applied um, that that initial guitar track was. Okay so uh, with these tracks out of the picture I'll go ahead and just delete those empty track holders um, and then we'll go ahead and grab the snare drum so you can delete these guitar tracks as well now that they're empty. Here's the snare That goes right there. Here's the bass guitar. So this is a pretty insane amount of tracks to work with. Um, uh, part of the reason why I picked this song is because it had one of the most complicated possible setups that you could run across so that if you have a song that is in 4-4 time, doesn't use all the instruments, um, etc., it would be easier by comparison, but this tutorial would sort of cover all the possible bases. Um, this track here is a backing track, so that's probably got some... Uh, probably some of her hand claps or things like that. Let's see what's in there. Yep, hand claps. So that's going to go right here in a, an area called tracks and then now we're left with the keys and the harmonies and we're gonna need to create some additional tracks uh, to hold those. So we need two more keys tracks up here 